潮潮湿啊，绿潮了，绿色潮湿是吗？哎呀 ，And I bought just a small amount you know, in the bag, and I went there and offered to the abbot at that temple, and he shared it with、uh, Rosie Kaplow. Rosie is Japanese, mean master, yeah, yeah, master of Zen, huh?、Mm. Meaning he already became a teacher. He can teach Zen already. So Rosie Kaplow. And he talked in Taipei, yeah. <laughs> Before one time, he came all the way from America. He wrote a book also. He went to Japan and studied Zen there.、Uh, I will get to the point soon. Okay, you know my calendar, right? By now, <laughs> <laughs> that makes it more interesting. Otherwise, I just tell you two seconds finished, nothing else, and no punch line or no waiting. <laughs> and then, I didn't mean to sneak or anything. I just happened to. Be outside next to that window, you know, outside of the window with other people, and they were eating inside at the table, and the abbot gave him this green date. You know, you eat it; it's similar to apple, it's crunchy. It's about this,、uh, about this big only, yeah. Oh no, some are bigger than about this big, yeah. About like like this, and this big, yeah. And it's crunchy. It tastes very nice. It depends on which one, of course, but mostly, it tastes very nice. I like it very much. A long time I haven't seen it, but if I see it, I will say one and show you, so you can draw. Yeah, <laughs> only one. <laughs> and the abbot offered my dates, <laughs> the green dates, to Rosie Kaplow and said, "Oh, this is precious. This is precious." He didn't know it was for me. I did not give it directly. I gave it only, of course, to his disciples, yeah, and they gave it to him. And just by the way, I sat there and saw him giving it to Rosie Kaplan. Oh, this is precious! This is precious. But I don't know why he said that. Maybe he sensed something. He was also a very good practitioner, huh? A four level, huh? At that time, I let him go up already. And he said, "This is precious. This is precious." He, he offered and introduced that to him. But I wonder why he said that because this thing in Taiwan is nothing really precious, 没什么了不起的嘛，是不是 ？Yeah, and in season is plentiful and it's pretty cheap because even I could afford it <laughs> out of my 500 NT per month. How much is that? 500 NT. How much is that? Ten, fifteen. Yeah, fifteen dollars. But I had to pay for the bus to go there, you know, because I. Admire that abbot at that time. I was a nun, a freshman, freshman from precept school. Yeah, so I went there and then I accidentally saw him also, Rosie Kaplow.、Mm. So they ate it and then it seemed very enjoying. Oh, my heart feels so good, so good, because they didn't know it was me who gave it even. So they did not know that I was so happy inside because the abbot, ah,、uh, I say. He's a big monk, you know. Many people came and he had everything, all the offerings and the people all the time. So for him, this little green date was nothing. But he said, "Oh, this is precious." He keeps saying that while offering it to Roshi Kaplan. Oh, this is precious. This is precious, precious. He really meant it. He's facing, and then they ate and they enjoy so much. And, oh, you know, the silent giver. Just secretly know about that secret. Oh, I loved. I never forgot that feeling. Felt so good, you know. Felt so good because I didn't have a lot of money, and this thing for me, I thought this was nothing at all. You know, this I didn't even directly give to him because it was nothing. You know, just like you go out and buy a few grapes or something, huh? Grapes even more, more valuable. You know. So I felt already very embarrassed, you know, that I didn't have much to give. So I gave it to whomever as others.、Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I didn't even say for whom or anything. I thought they would just、uh, put it together in a bunch of orange apples for mixed together for everybody, you know. I did what I I could, you know. I didn't want to come empty-handed, nah. And that's all I could afford. But they sat there and ate it all. 
with appreciation and gusto and love and and say precious, precious, repeat it again, again and again for this monk to say that. He's very famous in Taiwan. He was very famous. He's gone already, gone to heaven already. But for him to say that, and I admired him, you know, he went to my resided temple at that time and lectured. Though I did not understand much, but I saw him as a very dignified monk, a true monk. And the way he looked, you know, oh, I really liked him so much. So I went to visit his temple and brought my little recording machine that I had to record his teachings. <laughs> so that when I came home, I could have it translated for me. <laughs> yeah, because I love monks who, who are real. Monks and the real, and even go out and preach to people. And the way he looked, just like when you look at the picture of Baba of Sawan Singh, you feel something, you feel he is something. Yeah. Not just any other Sikh guru, but he has something. Immediately, the first time I saw, that's how I felt. The photo only, yeah? He was gone then, yeah. So, oh, I feel very good. But that, that's not the end of the story, okay? Remind me before the calendar gets too long. <laughs> So this Roshi Kaplo, he had been studying Zen with true Zen monks in Japan, okay? He also wrote something very funny, American, you know, he asked, why don't you eat uh, beef or eat meat? American. <laughs> I don't know if at that time he was vegetarian or not. Maybe later he was. So the monk in the temple, the Japanese monk, not the abbot, but simple monk, yeah, say, we don't eat meat because we cannot afford it. <laughs> so he, really, he thought it was funny. In his book, I had it, the book. I don't know how I had it, but it, I don't know where anymore. <laughs> Gone with the wind anyway. I travel too much. I don't have many things left. So he studied with Zen monks in Japan, eh? the famous Zen monks. I forgot his master's name. And then he graduated. Yeah, but in Japan sometimes they do retreats, of course, together. Yeah, for one week or two weeks, and one time they did it for two weeks. The first time he went there, okay, they were doing it for two weeks. After two weeks, they still make him continue to sit longer. He said, "Oh, cannot anymore. The first time sit so long already." Then the master Albert said to him, "You are more capable than what you think. Just sit." extra. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. Uh, I want to say that our body is really a marvel, you know. You can push it to the limit. Of course, we don't always want to push. Yeah, We want to enjoy a little nap here and there. Oh my God, life is hard enough. But don't nap too long. Huh? Don't say, Master, say that. Huh? You nap a lot already. <laughs> Even during meditation, you nap a lot. <laughs> huh? Lucky you're not in a Japanese temple. In Japan, the abbot or the assistant comes around with a, such a long, long, very long stick, flat, and they can reach you anywhere, <laughs> like omnipresent, omnipotent, because it's long, you understand? And mostly the temple is not that big, so, you know, even they can sit here, they see you napping, then they puck. <laughs> yeah, wake you up so rudely. Hmm? But it's not that painful. I've been hit <laughs> uh, once, you know. But it's not painful. It's just, it's just an embarrassment, you know. They want to emphasize that, hey, you cheated. You are not good practitioner. Ah, uh, uh, sleeping uh, on the job, <laughs> no good. <laughs> Seems like that, yeah. But it doesn't hurt. They don't do it to hurt you, okay? But they have to do it correctly, otherwise it might hurt you in a different way, okay? So it's just on shoulder. Tap one shoulder, two shoulder, that's it. Once, and then you probably won't dare sleep again because it makes noise and everybody looks at you <laughs> and knows that you're sleeping. You understand? And for Zen monk, there's a pride, a pride to sit straight non-stop and saying something like moo or maybe om or maybe who am I or I am who <laughs> I know who I am well, I, maybe you don't know so you keep asking yourself <laughs> koan you know koan yeah 
and they're very diligent. They sit also outside in the night. And then he did it. So he wrote it in his book. Yeah, He did not think he could make it. Because how can I? He said, already two weeks. How can I sit another week? For what? How can I? How can I? We're so happy. It's end. We can go out, you know, do what we want. Now the abbot make us sit again. So the abbot said, you can do more than you think. Then he really could, yes. Meaning the body is able to withstand more than what we think. We just pre-program ourselves into thinking that, oh, I need this, I need that, I need to sleep. But if we have a interesting movie, sometimes we don't sleep at all, we keep watching, watching, watching. <laughs> but if it's going to do kitchen chore or, you know, cleaning the bathroom, oh, I'm so tired and sleepy. <laughs> Yeah, the reason I was sleepy was also because I didn't do what I wanted to do. I wasn't really enjoying preparing my dress, you understand, or cleaning uh, some of the things, or <laughs> etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah. I did not really enjoy it. I do it for the job. Hmm? Hmm. Not that I am not willing. It's just that willing and enjoying are different things. Yeah. Sometimes you do things that you don't want to do, but you do it willingly because it's for a good cause. Yeah. So another story about him is that, yeah, when he first came, Japan is cold in winter, believe me. It snows very high. You can see one of my clips that I walk like this, yeah, with a big hat, flowing hat, flowing frill, yeah, Japan near the wood cabin where I, I live before. When he first came, it was maybe winter or something, so cold like that. So they gave him these are warm pack, you know? You have it sometimes in here. And told him to put it on his stomach, the tantian, you know, the solar plexus, then it will warm the whole body. So, so he did that. And later they discovered that he's burned, the whole area burned, nasty burned skin. Oh, they treated him but laughed. They said, you idiot, why you put it directly on your skin? We all put it on the top of the cloth and we find it. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't say anything. He continued to meditate like that. Yeah. Some funny story that he told us. <laughs> okay, so that is his story, hmm? the story of Rusi Kaplo. He had students in America afterwards, eh? and this abbot invited him to come because this abbot also had another temple in New York. He went to Taiwan, New York, Taiwan, New York. He had a green car, eh? and that's where I cleaned toilets <laughs> at the beginning, and then was discovered by, you know, the group of people, yeah, of uh, black American people. They were my first disciples in America. <laughs> and later some of the disciples of the abbot also wanted to follow me. I also trusted them. Might as well, I already began, no, why not? <laughs> and afterwards, uh, I left, huh? because so many people came to see me again and again, and, and it began, you know, making smoke. And also, I didn't eat for a long time, for a while, so they began to get curious and ask me, and then blah, 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 and then I tossed him. And then the abbot also got wind of it, hmm? correct? Hmm. Heard about it? Got wind of it? Yeah? Ah. I don't know where I learned that. I didn't even use that before ever. I don't know why I even read this kind of thing. These people don't talk like that often, no. I haven't heard it before. It just comes out. Must be from you, huh? Thank you, huh? <laughs> Your blessing, huh? <laughs> yeah, sometimes you sit with intelligent people, they rub off on you, huh? Or vice versa, yeah? Or you rub off on them and you become stupid. <laughs> yeah, truly. No. If I stay too long with some people who don't speak a lot of English and who are a little bit less than low IQ, then I become also kind of dull and sometimes think long time for one word and talking but don't make good sentences. Then I know it's time to say Yonara for a while, otherwise I become where I don't know where I go, <laughs> become what. So of course then the master knew about it, yeah? And one of the sisters in the temple, she took care of the master, yeah? Maybe helping with clothes and something like that. She and her mother. Oh, she was very jealous, you know, because the abbot was very fond of me. 
And she said, one time, I, I didn't know much Chinese at that time, but I knew they're fighting about me. Oh, that's the first time I heard the Albert's loud voice and very serious face. Normally, when he thought, he didn't smile a lot, but he had never raised his voice like that. And afterward, I left anyway. <laughs> 